Plays of Pardelia here in the largest place of eternal rest in the city, where right now a steady stream of people in the tens of thousands have made it here to usher in All Saints Day tomorrow when the entire nation pay their respects and pray for their deceased loved ones. What's up over there, Clay? Some tens of thousands of Filipinos visited the Manila North Cemetery on the eve of All Saints Day. As of 4 in the afternoon, Manila North Cemetery recorded 80,000 visitors. However, the inflow of people expected here is likely to crest over a million visitors tomorrow, the main day of the dead celebration. The Manila local government reminded the public the cemetery will be open from 5 in the morning up to 5 in the evening. Alcoholic beverages, flammable materials, sharp objects and deadly weapons are strictly prohibited. Those who bring karaoke sing-along, booming sound systems, gambling accessories, as well as those driving private vehicles will not be allowed entry or access inside the Memorial Park. Visitors should expect strict security check at the entrance. Banned items will be confiscated. Meanwhile, the health department urged the public to avoid bringing their small children with them during All Saints and All Souls Day to keep them from exposure to diseases that may cost by overcrowding. William, the Manila North Cemetery's gates will be closed at exactly 5.15 p.m. Those who will try to enter the vicinity will be prohibited. Meanwhile, those who are still inside will be allowed to stay up until 7 in the evening. William? Yes, uh, thank you. Clay Zilpardilia reporting live from Manila North Cemetery. Meanwhile, the Department of Health advised parents and caregivers to refrain from bringing small children to cemeteries, graveyards, or memorial parks. Health Secretary Teodoro Erbosa said intense heat and sudden unexpected downpour may expose them to diseases. Overcrowding is also dangerous for them given how COVID-19 is still plateauing, which means the disease is still present. Herbosa also advised people going to cemeteries to bring their own food and water and avoid foods that easily spoil to ensure their safety. And six barangays in Lanao del Sur and one in Samar conducted barangay and Sangguniang Kabataan elections just today after some delays in the del delivery of election paraphernalia yesterday. According to Commission on Elections Chairman George Irwin Garcia, the election paraphernalia in these areas did not arrive on time yesterday. In Calbayog City, soldiers, policemen and election officials carrying the election materials were fired upon by insurgents while on their way to their voting centers. While in Barangay Tagoranao in the town of Lanao del Sur, a resident shared with PTV a video of commotion among the residents wherein the ballots were seized or illegally taken away by suspicious characters. He said the voters were told early that the election would be delayed. Voting started at 7 a.m. on Tuesday and ended at 3 p.m. Meanwhile, the Comelec called for a one-week transition period to proclaim the winners of BSKE 2023 before taking office. In other news, in the Mexican seaport and resort city of Acapulco, a desperate dash for basic needs is underway in the day since Hurricane Otis slammed ashore. The strength of the storm caught forecasters by surprise as area residents now seek food, fuel and water to survive. VOA's Arash Arabasadi has more. Police arrive at a gas station in Acapulco, Mexico at the scene of reported looting. Residents of this resort town screaming back at police as one man chants, we are not stealing, we want gas, you are the robbers. The lack of basic needs follows the landfall of Hurricane Otis last week. In just 12 hours time, Otis more than doubled strength from 113 to 257 kilometers per hour. Otis ultimately peaked at the strongest hurricane classification as a category five storm. 
a hurricane with intensity that caught forecasters by surprise. National Hurricane Center Director Michael Brennan says that was because the storm found a much more favorable environment than anticipated, in part due to warmer waters, a result of climate change, and winds moving at just the right altitude and direction. The storm's damage created a desperate situation for many living in Acapulco. Scenes of widespread looting from bare essentials like food and diapers to higher-end items like flat-screen TVs. Addressing reporters on Friday, Mexican President Andres Manuel López Obrador said nature the creator protected Mexico despite the hurricane's fury, adding fatalities appeared to be not so many. As of Sunday morning, the death toll is 39. For its part, the Mexican government responded by deploying the military to serve meals while medical personnel deliver care for makeshift clinics. Forecasters say the East Pacific lacks much of the hurricane-predicting infrastructure seen around the Atlantic coast of the United States. They say without buoys, robust land observation and radars along the coast, they rely almost exclusively on satellite imagery, saying that leaves them with a jigsaw puzzle and only 10% of the pieces. For those living in a hurricane's path, that means little warning of what's to come. Arash Arbasadi, VOA News. This is William Theo. Stay informed, be aware, get ahead, be of use, and get the news right here.